Right, we're back again, chaps. Chap S's. As you can see, all the uh, the olive green primers dried quite nicely as well. It looks a few variations in shades, which is what I was after as well, which is quite nice. Same with the turret. It's a couple of uh, just took an aerial since last time we were on guitar string aerial. See the colour variations there again. The camera will pick them up. And on the, I've just been messing around on the lower hull at the moment. You can see there's a couple of different tones there. On there, that's what I tend to do. I try to mess around with the bottom of it just to see if I can get some decent colours where I want. So what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to use some filters. Uh, not a lot, just in, in certain parts of the vehicle. So we can move these two things out the way at the moment. And I shall turn this round. So we've got to clean, clean so we can see a bit better. Let me just see if I can bring this other light in. Let me see if that makes it any better at all. Does that make it any better? Bring that down there. Right, so what I'm going to do to start with is I've got a selection of stuff out of the, uh, out of the um, weather and stuff. But what I'm going to do is I made a, um, my own green filter using oil, oil paints, which I use the Windsor & Newton Sap Green Series 1. And all I did with that was sort of like 90% thinner to 10% paint and what I've been using at the moment, I got this off the internet, instead of buying the small bottles of like the VAK and stuff, I bought the Bob Ross orderless thinner and it came to £12 I think it was, so it's quite, you know, it was 32 fluid ounces in there, so 900, 946ml so that should keep me going for quite a while Instead of using the uh, small bottles all the time, so all I've, all I've done is mix this here: ninety percent thinners, ten percent paint, and I've just I use these uh, little these little jars my daughter gets me um, from work. So what I'm going to do, I'll just take the lid off, give it a good shake, which I've done. I should really put an agitator in there. Uh, and what I've got here is just a flat brush. Again, just a little flat brush, nothing. You know, I put it down there because normally I'll knock it over. So what I'll do is I'll get a good soak on it. I'll take most of it off. Just take a little bit off it, and I can highlight some panels here. Yeah. Uh, say this, so you gradually build these up. Let me do that. Same again. Just get a bit more on. Not take too much off. This is a gradual thing, it isn't a an instant instant thing, so let's make sure it's all mixed up properly, which it seems to be. Yeah, that's fine. I just pick out panels like risen panels, I tend to use these. Just a couple of petrol caps, the caps on there, on there, there's a piece on there. It's very subtle, you can't really tell the difference at all yet until it dries, so I'm going to build it up gradually. And there's a couple little panels here. These little, uh, I don't know what they are. I'm going to go over that again, and the hatch again. I'm going to do the same hatch on the other side. That'll be slightly different. So It's just a matter of taking your time, picking out... Some panels and just say right. Well, have a go. I'll do this one. I'm do a little bit more on that. There we go. Let's gradually do it. Um, anyway, I could really do a darker shadow. Maybe just here, just gradually fade them away. I won't do the same on the other side. They're maybe just there, uh, well, they're going to be covered really, so I'll just go again on there. So, this is the gradual thing, it does take time to do. It isn't uh, a five minute sit down to do them. 
and just make sure you, you know, I'm taking off my brush as well and putting it onto there, so it's not, it's not dripping. I don't want it dripping in the, in the stuff. And I say, just let it dry first, obviously, and gradually build it up. So, Gonna see that much. Maybe perhaps a little bit of the side panel oh yeah. around the gun mantle, perhaps. Or here, just work it in. You can't really see me doing that, can you? Just let me just bring this light maybe slightly down. I'll get some better lights, I think. You just pick out sections really that you, that you think maybe the top of the light, like the light guard, maybe the tow hook, the uh, the lifting hook. And there again, just keep going back over. Where you've been, just get the panels. You know they're not going to be slightly different, in slightly different shades. It's basically what you want. Uh, maybe you do a uh, piece down here, just along here. A yeah, piece maybe on the side. You know, just pick out places not do it solid, just pick out places you, you want it subtle is, is, the, is more the word you're looking for it's not uh, there again we'll do the we'll do the back of this one here so we'll just put a bit on there you just want a subtle changes in the colours not a drastic change from one you know where you can almost see the end of the brush stroke and onto the next you're going to gradually fade them in right, so I'll just clean my brush on here and we'll leave that to dry again I should put the lid on next. I had one accident this morning I don't want another so that was one of my homemade ones uh, I've actually got I'm going to use I'm going to put it out. Uh, where's it gone where's it gone where's it gone where's it gone I'm going to use the tritonal uh, wash. Well, it's actually a filter, so try a filter, and it's uh, it's a MIG one. And I can't see the bloody number. Ah, it's on the top. If you can make that out, one fifteen. Is it a one or something? It's just fair. I think it's fifteen ten. Yeah, a MIG, a MIG, fifteen ten. So again, give it a good shake. And after you mix it all up, so I've just got a couple of these marine bolts in mine just to make sure it's all mixed. And again, I'll leave it down here because no my look, I'll spill it. So, so, again, again, just dip it in, take the majority of it off. Couple of white strokes on there, and just say right. We'll have this panel here. Just around here. Don't have to be perfect. I'll just have a different colour on this panel here. You can almost instantly see that that's changed colour on there. Um, and again, just do the same thing again. Pick out another panel. It's a slow, it's a slow job. You know, it isn't just a a quick quick ten minute like I say a ten minute job. It's uh, you know spend a bit of time on it. You'll reap the benefits in the end. Just pick out panels. Basically, you're trying to deceive the eye just to see the different variations in colours of the uh, of the olive green. Right, 
right, so that really shouldn't be. I'll just I'll just do the uh, the muck guard. One of them. I'm going to keep the other one off. There's damage. Okay, uh, along the side pipes we could do again. Maybe along inside the uh, sponson. Yeah, the better brackets are. Do a little bit more thing on the brush there. What you do on this side doesn't have to mirror on the other side when it comes to filters. It really doesn't. So I'll just do a little bit on there like so. So it be subtle when it's dry. And perhaps on this side I shall do the opposite. I'll have a little bit down here too much of my brush there. If you can't quite see again, can we? I'm not looking to the monitor, am I again? So I'll probably the angle I've got's a bit difficult, but we'll manage. There again, we'll just, just take your time. Okay. You can't actually see any difference here, but it's too dark. There we are. It's hard to see on a uh, olive drab tank. Uh, see, I'm going to. I think I'll put a piece just in. in I know you're not going to see it, but I'll do it anyhow. Just inside the uh, the storage tray at the back. Maybe a little bit on the bolts on the front. You know the bulkhead. Let me just pick out that just for now. And just a few on there. I'll, go, I'll just cancel. I'll just answer the phone. Ah, sorry about that. Right, we're back again, so where were we? Where are we? Just on the front guard, the uh, on the guards. A little bit down there as well. It's just subtlety, like I say, it's just it's it is just subtle. Brush off. Put the lid back on. Right. Also, I'm gonna use, which I did use on the, I think it was one of me, the Russian tanks. I can't remember which one I did. I think it was on the. Uh, I can't remember which one it was now. I'm gonna actually use. It sounds silly. Blue for Panzer Grey filter which is uh, an AK one and it's AK071 blue for Panzer Grey. Maybe sounds strange but uh, you'll see just a subtle it's just there again it's just subtle. It's all I want. These are subtle and cool variations. Oh Davis so give them a good shake these filters, they do uh, settle quite fast. So again just take the majority of it off, clean your brush up, pick a panel, so I'll probably pick one here with a bit of shadow on it. There. Just round the back of that. Sorry again, I keep for do keep forgetting. And that. And again, some more off it. Maybe again underneath here, this panel here, because it's going to be in the dark. It's going to 
going to be in the shade most of the time. The overhang of the uh, Just slightly feather it out. Maybe underneath there as well. Which I really didn't. Okay. So. Right, let's do a little more. Let's take some off there again. And we'll do some on this hatch here. See, you see how I'm hardly putting any actually thing on there. As I say, you're gradually building it up, it just doesn't in, in a one court hit. So, uh, maybe the gun itself, the mantlet on the gun. Just on the machine on the MG. Maybe, maybe just the. On the, on the gun. Uh, where the gun rests, travelling lock, travel lock, travel lock. I'm trying to think of. There we go. So I think that's maybe a little bit more. It's on the one more piece, I think, with the blue, blue for grey. Yeah, just a little. This one I haven't done yet. Just a little piece on here. Just until that panel breaks there. I don't think I need any more anywhere else. Maybe just a piece down here. Just gradually tear it back to there. And again, we shall just go over that piece again. So gradually, gradually, gradually. If it was rushing, I'd use a hair dryer, but I like to see it dry naturally without being forced. Right, so let's clean my brush off. Let's clean that off. And let's put the lid back on. And I think we'll just have one more colour variation, I think. We'll just have a little bit of... Uh, where has it gone? No, oh, we won't have it. That was what I only used. It changed my mind, didn't it? So as you can see, you can't really... It's, it's, it's subtle more than anything until it dries. But what I'll do now is I'll say I've got to, I've got to do the... Uh, turret and the lower lower hull with all the same colours. I'll gradually build this up as I'm doing this first that'll dry and then as one dries do the other. Maybe two or three coats depending on how subtle you want it to be and you'll in you will see the colour variations in it. They'll be nice, there'll be somewhat interesting on it. But uh, yeah so that's how I do the uh, the first part of my weathering is uh, with a filter. So what I'll do now is I'll uh, I'll carry on off camera with the rest of it. Um, when I've got this part done, I'll get back to you. So it's Greg signing off, and we'll catch you later. Right, <coughs> welcome back, chaps. Sorry, it's a bit longer than I uh, I said for by saying by see you the next day. So life got in the way again. I don't know that what's happened in these last few months. Life's just been one chore after another. But we, hopefully, this is the end of it all. Uh, so as you can see, I've uh, finished the um, filtering and the filters. You can see the slight div 
colour color variations um, on the panels on the top on the sides just to vary it you know like I say I used the um, filters we just had in the, in the last in the last video nothing different and I forgot I put the decals on as well so but there again you know how to put decals on I was going to use my uh, stencils but I couldn't find the right mark in the right numbers so I went with uh, the kit stuff and I have to say they went down really really well considering the age of the kit just using Microsol and Microset and they've gone down really well so so the next process will be um, let's have a look around it first before we go any farther I can bring it up to uh, it's better this way there we go you can see the colour variations and not, I should be able to but, uh, using the different filters, just picking blocks out and doing them so, unfortunately the glue is set and I can't move the bloody barrel unless it's paint, I'm not too sure but whatever it is, it's stuck in that position unfortunately which is, you know, it's not a big problem So, so the next wheel now would be pin washing. I should be going along all the. Uh, uh, made my own wash using um, rum, rum, <laughs> raw umber, which is from the uh, Windsor and Newton series one, and I've got this offline. Instead of buying all the tiny small bottles of. Um, Orderless thinner. I actually went and bought this up on the old Mr. Bob Ross, and this was about 12 quid for you know, you know, 32 fluid ounces, 946 mil, which is a lot, lot cheaper than buying the uh, the AK one and other brands. So that's what I've been using. So that's what I mixed the uh, my little wash with, and these people say these are the jam jars my daughter gets me. So. There's always, there's always um, room for these in my uh, hobby room. So I'll just get, I'll put a little mar a marine nut in there just to, as an agitator. So we can start off uh, having a little go. So let's pick a point. Let's start with um, let's start with the filler caps at the back on the side of here. Let's just dab it on. There's a couple of little indentations in little nuts inside that one. So I like I like my washes quite weak, so I can actually build build them up. You know, keep going back to them, so they're not uh, overpowered straight away. You can you know rather put less on than more, so it's easy to take. You know to add than to take off. So let's go along. So the only problem with these washes that you make yourself is yet they settle quite fast so you have to keep uh, mi mixing them up. That's the only problem with them but that's not a massive problem. So just keep going along. There's a couple of little handles here. A couple of little prison bolt heads. Just put a bit on the And just I always try and make a little, a little shadow just underneath. You can see that now, just a little shadow underneath. Underneath these caps will do this side, so don't forget the both. Just gradually build it up. I have a little cocktail stick just to if anything goes over. There's a couple, there's a couple of little risen bolt heads on there. So just go around picking, picking things up that you want to, uh, you want to do. A 
well seems it should be nice on the well seam, you should just be able to tap it. That should run down the well seam. Put enough on your brush. And there again there's a couple of little hinges. And again, I must have bothered about the tray at the back because obviously I've got storage and things to go on that. Towards the end. So again, I'll just carry on doing. There's enough flowing, there's nice and maybe that it took. You can always get a cocktail stick, sorry, cocktail, a uh, cotton board and wipe the excess off, it's no big problem with oil paint, so they should uh, stay wet for quite a while. It's not an exact science, as you say, everybody does things slightly different. So I probably lose a lot of these details when I do the, um, the pigments and things like that, but they're underneath and, some, and they do come through. It sounds silly, I'm not going to lose them all. I can always go back and highlight them again, it's not a problem. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to keep going back over the same few things to start with until I'm happy with the colour. And again, just keep. No, oh, it takes quite a while, but we're in no rush. Keep adding it to it. Bald heads again, just keep tapping them. It's no problem. You can't really tell on camera because it's a, it takes quite a while for me to uh, to get the colour that I'm right. But we're getting there. That's the main thing is I've, I've started the process. So just keep going back to them and go around, and then as it starts to dry, you'll see the colour that you need. I think I might have put a bit of floor stuff into that just to uh, help it. I think. And again, just keep going round, round and round. I say Rome wasn't built in a night. So what I'll do is I'll carry on doing this. I'll keep going round the uh, and the, the Sherman until I'm happy with what I've got on the colour, and then I'll get back to you. So let me just I'll say I'll just do this a little bit more on here. Let's do another little round. that shadow I don't know if the camera can pick it up with being wet at the moment but it will get there it will get there so what I'll do is I shall uh, carry on with this process and then I'll get to you back to you when, uh, when I'm happy with how far we've gone so we shall catch you soon. Right, I'm back again. As you can see, I've applied all the filters all over the tank and the pin wash now, which is uh, excuse me. We sort of bring some of the, the details out, and bolts and little things like that. Seems to make it come up. Got some uh, in the 
because there's no glass pieces for the turret they're all molded into one I have some um, I think it's from Panzer Aces it's called Periscope which I've actually put into each part I've just given them a slight wash with grey it's normal grey wash just to dull them down a bit so I've also put the decals on as well I think did I say that last time I can't remember so I say all the pin washes on you can see now all the well I say I've just Finish this part here, which isn't finished round here, but messing around with that just at the moment, that's why it's a bit wet on that side. But you can see all the pin washes, brought the uh, all the uh, weld seams out, all the, on above the turret, and the gun itself. And I darkened the, so I've just darkened the engine grills at the back, and I've put some along the sides of the uh, sponsons here and made these go into each part of that let it roll right down the full length of the sponsons to make it dark as it would be it'll be like dusty and crappy all I think it's gone down into there uh, I did a piece of wood it wasn't on this kit just a piece of the old wood for the store for the storage this is basically just all of those lollipop sticks um, Stain with the old dipping wash and put on. I've got, I've got storage to go on. I've, uh, I've sprayed some storage, I've primed some storage. Let's pull that out of the way, minute. I've just primed all that. Make sure of things of the lot of the small, the small bags is from my good friend Neil, the mad Welshman. They're all primed in the some parts off of the kits, and there's a bit of resin there. The big pack at the bottom is a, is a resin, and only the small pack on the other, the on your right hand side is the uh, resin as well so that's all to be put on at some point when we get near the end when obviously it's got to be painted and weathered and one thing and another so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do like um, with oils again which I've just used the, you know Windsor and Newton oils I've used um, a sap green I've got all into this little piece of card which is in my fingers now Fantastic. On this piece of card, I've got sap green, um, verde green, um, blue, raw umber, burnt umber, black, white, and what's the other one? Oh, Van Dyke brown. On there as well. So I've let that. You know, first thing this morning is you can see all the oils are coming out of it now, so I should be able to use those. So what I'll do is I shall uh, just take the the turret off for now, place that over there, out of the way, and we'll start off with just by picking in a couple of panels. We'll start with this panel here, and I'm going to vary. I'm going to vary the colour. So all I'm going to do is just get a little thin paintbrush. I think I'll start with. Uh, a sap green. You've seen people do this before many a time. See, so I'm just going to try and vary. Once you get some decent amounts on my brush. Let's try this little cocktail stick that I had, and then we'll try a bit of the old uh, birdie green. Right, just dot them around, you know, the, you know, and a bit of burnt umber, I think, on this panel. A couple of dots here and there. I think that'll do for now. So I'll just leave that to uh, dry a little bit. Uh, yeah, so obviously this is a bit wet because I'm just gradually wearing in the uh, the engine grills, getting that sort of. So this is not fastened down still. Off, so I'll take it off and I'll show you the actual. I've weathered a bit of the the uh, the running gear as well with the uh, pin wash. 
darken that down slightly. I've got the uh, reason rollers to paint black on the tops. And you can see on the bottom I can just by messing about by doing things on the bottom so the gradually build up things. I'll be testing other things on the bottom as well as time is finished. It'll be a, a multicoloured uh, tank at the bottom. But yeah, so the all running gear is uh, thing. All the wheels. Uh, yes, they're all done out All the wheels are ready to be put on. These have got to be weathered as well. The, uh, I'm not overly keen on how the um, sprocket is going to, to attach to the uh, main tank. It's, it's all the easiest that is. Well, yeah, sorry. Is that? You know, that just sits onto there. You've got no control of. You know, it's pretty loose. And I usually like to keep these loose for when I'm doing the tracks. But it's not going to be possible on this kit really. It's same with the um, the roller on the back, the uh, re return roller on the back. It's only got that one mounting point. Sorry, I'm out of the, I'm out of the uh, so there's just one mounting point here for you know, what is basically your return. See, that's a big problem. I'm going to have to maybe do something about it. Keep going out of shot, sorry. You know, didn't exactly. I don't know. I'm not overly, overly happy about the uh, the attachments. Really, it was the same with the um, the bogies as well. They didn't really give you that much uh, thing to grab hold of. So I put a mixture of uh, to me a thing and a bit of super glue just to be uh, on the safe side. But yeah, as you can see, the roller goes on the back. That are going to be weathered up. And the, you know the wheels quite nice when they're on there. These are quite nice. The fit, these said again, they've only got a small fit, but keep going out of shot. I'm very sorry. You know it'll uh, once we get there, it'll be alright, I suppose. But that's quite a bit of wear yet. So I shall just pop those back out of the way. So this was kindly given to me by Neil as well, the mad Welshman. Just corrugated cardboard wrapped up in his uh, table. Brilliant, works a treat. I'm sure you boys know all about that. So let's put that back in my expensive uh, paint booth. So all I've got in here is the uh, Bob Ross uh, Odorless Thinners. And I shall bring this back in here, put that over there, I'll warm me, I'll spill it. I'll take that down there as well and put it off the way of the turret for now. Excuse me. So what I'll do next, while that's still drying, I'll, I'll go along the other with the variation in colours again. I'll uh, do maybe a bit of blue. Not too much, just a couple of dots. A bit of Romba, I think it's Romba. So you can't see, can you really? What I'm actually putting on. You know, I don't need a lot. You must make sure you've got the oil out of the uh, paint, otherwise, it never dries. And I'll put a touch of white in this one as well. Just to change it up a little bit. Maybe put a touch of the old burnt umber in again. So you burnt sienna. So I'm going to continue doing this all over the tank. At varying stages, and I'll pick up panels, the wage panel, just move this out of the way. Yeah, like I say, I've got the, uh, the Bob Ross thinners in a jar, and I've got one of these, it's basically just a cheap blending brush, really. So I was dipping in there, uh, hardly anything on my brush, take most of, the, most of it off, so it, it's almost dry. 
because of the angle I'm at I'll have to go towards you and then I'll just sort of gradually just drag everything down to what it obviously is uh, as it would do, the rain, rain drops and everything else goes downwards just keep blending it obviously clean your brush, dab it again get most of the thinners off and just gradually blend it in until you're happy until you're, that's the main thing, is you're happy with your result and if you don't like it, you can always put a bit more uh, thinner on your brush and take the whole lot off and start again. It's a beauty of using the oil paints, which I'm really into at the moment. So, gradually, until I'm happy with what I've got. I don't know if you can see the colour variation when you've been wet you can't really let me just see if I can bring the light down onto it again you can see the colour variation again a bit wet if so I can assure you, you you'll, you'll find you're happy medium with free blending as you're going along so if it's a bit too much on there for me so I'm almost dry brushing it now because of that. there's no thinner on the brush at all well what there is is very very minimal so. I like them dry naturally I'm not going to use an air dryer you know I find it's alright if, you, if you're uh, in a hurry but I'm in no hurry to do this so I'll take most of the thinner off again until you're happy with what and then do it the same thing again with bear in mind I've got different colours on here this time just a little bit of blues, greens, beiges, aromba just something a bit different on this one Keep blending your work until you're happy with what you've got. You can also, when this is dry, you can actually go back over and add a few more oils um, over the top of it. So you don't want too much of a, I think a bit too much blue on there, but I can blend it out, it's not a problem. Get my brush a bit drier, it's a bit wet at the moment. And I'll just gradually and obviously I'm going to continue this on the side as well, the same the same colours or roughly the same colours again. So I'm going to do that through a whole model, turret included. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, just to, you know, it's hard to explain about when you feel you've got enough blending done, which I think that's about right for where I want. See about the you know about the back and the sides there, but don't worry about the sides because oh, I'll take it up for now because I'll be using the same technique along the bottom of the side skirts as well. A bit too much blue for my liking on that, so let's take a bit more of it off. So what I'll probably do with that now, since it's nearly dry, what I'll do is I'll put a bit of uh, verdi, verdi green back on there. Get the colour out of it. Couple of dots. There we go, so I'll just leave that to leave 
leave that to dry and then I'll uh, stroke that off and then I'm going to work around as you can see now with the back of the turret as it sorry the back is slowly drying and you've got that sort of a streaking effect of like different colours which is quite nice you can see it's not going to be exactly all the, every every part of the tank is not going to be weathered the same it doesn't happen like that does it not every colour varies in shades and degrees of muck and things like that that goes on the tank itself so I'll, I'll take that in mind and as I'm going along I'll do that so there'll be less places to be mud on uh, more places to be sort of where the rain falls like a turret's going to get really the first you know the rain so there's not going to get a lot of mud on the top but it's going to get a lot of rain streaks and dust not so much mud like the uh, the lower hull so I'll be gradually doing that um, I'll pick out the parts that I need to uh, that I want to do and I'll leave the other ones but it's, it's coming along it's getting getting there we're getting there slowly uh, I still I've got the track like I say I've got the tracks done so I'm just a bit dubious in how they're going to work around them we having that sprocket when it won't roll but we'll uh, we'll cross our bridge when we get to it so that's where we are at the moment so what I'll do now is I'll say I'll continue with the uh, using the oils and we'll get back to you when I've done it and we'll move on to the next stage we should be using a few pigments and things like that and then we can start thinking about the lower hull you know I'm going to do a bit of the whole lower hull as well and it's going to not leave me completely alone but won't be obviously weathered as much as a beer because that'll be more dust and muck and things like that on the lower gear but uh, we'll do that so this is Greg signing off and we'll catch you very soon Right, back again. We've finished the uh, with the oils now. As you can see, I've gone around. It's still a bit. I had to just do a little bit more this morning that I forgot to do, but so it looks a bit wet at the moment. But as you can see, I've got a few streak marks going on along the sides on the turret. There's varying shades of green on the uh, actual hull and cast turret. I've added a piece of uh, wood at the bottom there for the, for the shelf as there was no one with, one with the kit so I'll just use the lolly stick and whether it's going to be weathered yet but it's getting there. Front plates all weathered, well oiled and things like that, the finishing the weathering yet. We uh, we have the uh, pigments and things to sort out yet and a bit of sponge chipping I think just on the certain edges. Um, yeah, it's getting there, slowly but surely getting there. So, that's better. See, so you can see the variations in colours on the back. They're quite subtle, but when I get the pigments on, you'll, you'll see a difference again. Yeah, it's just one layer after another on top. You may lose some of the oil work, but the majority of it will be still there. But you've got that, you know, the contrast between the two. It'll work quite nicely. So, it's, it's getting there. I'm debating on the tracks now because they're a bit, I don't know, I'm really unsure on them. But I'll give them a go to start with to see if I can get them to conform. Um, but if not, I'll have to see about what I can do about uh, cannibalising another kit I've got with the same tracks. A touch wood, I say in the next job, I'll get them uh, sprayed up as well, uh, ready to be. Well, I'll, I'll shape them first and then I'll spray them, I think. We'll see how we get on first. Yeah, so I'll now be the next the next job will be uh, is using some pigments. Now I'm going to start off with using a MIG. Uh, it's called Fading Bronze Green, which is this one, which is P051. This should be for the main colour of the uh, the tank, and I'll also use a bit of the old Allied Fading Green Bronze. Sorry, green fading, which is P036. I use a combination of them to start with on the tank itself before I start using pigments for the, you know, for the, for the dust and things like that. But um, I'll be using just a little mix that I've made up myself for the. Uh, there's not much left now for the um, sponge chipping. I'm not going to over chip it, it's going to do a little about round certain edges and things like that. But this is uh, NATO black, sort of 
I can't remember the thing. It's like a chocolatey colour almost. Like a chocolatey, deep chocolate colour. But it doesn't dry. It dries quite nice on the actually on the on, on green tank. Oh, on, on most uh, on most coloured tanks. But things are progressing. So I think we'll call this the end of the uh, update two. And we should start update three with the uh, the pigments and the chipping to start with. So what I'll do with that is basically all I do really. I'll I say I'll, I'll pick a panel out. Let's use the yeah, we'll use this one. You don't need a lot in your brush. I've got an old, just an old brush like that. It's a bit worn away. Just take a little. You don't need a lot. Uh, let's see, we'll pick that panel there. And you just work it in. You don't have to. So I'll have to go back over with a pin wash just for the white weld seams again, but that's not a problem. So you don't need a lot. I don't want to change it massively. I just want the variations. I don't know if you can quite see that yet, but it's just stippling and sort of pushing it into the uh, into the panel. I'm going to have to wait until some of the, these panels I'm doing are dry. The other ones are still a bit wet, yes, I'm going to leave the oils for about another 12 hours before I can carry on with the, uh, the pigments. And just a, I came back this morning, there's a few things I didn't like, so I went back over them, and uh, that's why they're a bit wet. As you can see, I, I didn't put much on there at all, in fact there's nothing on the brush now. It's almost like dry brushing. But you can see the colour variation slightly again on it and on this. You know, it, it is, it's a subtle, it's subtle more than in your face. I said we're starting off on the turret and working my way down from the commander's cupola all the way down to where I think mainly just looks a slight, or a slight uh, thing with pigments. So once I get the pigments on and the, and the, um, the sponge chipping done, I shall get back to you. So, we shall catch you very soon.